Hey guys, guess what? I'm back. It was a long, hard summer, and I spent a lot of time here in North Texas trying to find and zero in on carp. As you know, my local thing is fly fishing for carp here in North Texas on a technical pulling skiff. Um, it was the hardest summer I've had so far as far as locating and, and turning on the bite and things like that. So it was a really hard summer. To recap, I'm, let me go down the list of things I'm going to talk about coming in the future. That way if I, if I get to the end and I get all hyped up, I won't skip this part. So here's what we've got. First, I'm going to recap the spring and summer. Second, I'm going to talk about right now and your fly fishing opportunities going forward now that we're into the fall of 2019 here in North Texas and throughout Texas. And then third, we're going to talk about future episodes, and I'm going to go ahead and I might just put that in print on here to keep my mind limber. Fly line and fly rod cleaning, I just finished a video on that because we only have two seasons here in North Texas, and so every six months, if you'll just clean your rod and clean your lines, uh, they'll perform a lot better. It, I don't care what the mine looks like, as long as it performs good or better than uh, I expect it to, that's all I ask. Also, I've got a short little video on the Shaw Wing. I spent a whole week down in Port Mansfield just a few, a couple weeks ago. Spent a whole week down there. I was on a skiff. It's a Hell's Bay. It had a Shaw Wing on it. You buy Shaw Wings at Stiffy Push Pole down in Corpus. The Shaw Wing made a huge difference on that boat. It's got a tunnel. My boat does not have a tunnel, so I don't know if I'm going to end up with a Shaw Wing or not, but you're going to get to see it on video, and I can tell you that most of the boats down there are running some kind of a cavitation plate. The Shaw Wing is a cab plate. We call it cab plate, but cavitation plate. And so I'm going to show you video on that. I'm uh, going to go through all my Smith optics, which ones for what and how I use them on salt water. Um, again, during that entire week of rain, shine, and overcast and, and bright sunny days down on the Texas Gulf Coast at Port Mansfield. New thing coming out because, you know, we're indoors so much. I, I'm in North Texas, so we spend a lot of time indoors, which I hate. Uh, Starting this, this is October, um, starting this week, I'm going to start doing live YouTube videos via my telephone. I'm going to see how this works. I've done these things before, had some viewership and stuff like that. I've done these before, but what it's going to be limited to is simply fly tying. And this week's episode on Wednesday night, all things being equal, is on two different things. One is where to find the mylar bodies for making spoon flies. I found a source on that. It's a good source. That's one. And number two is how to make your own monofilament eyes real easy, real cheap, real quick, and without fire. Um, and those are the two things I'm going to do. Real short and sweet. Should be good. Um, and I don't know what the possibilities are for feedback during one of these videos, but uh, that I really am a fan of live video, and going forward, I hope to do more and more of those. Uh, we still got mosquitoes here, hadn't frozen yet, obviously. I'm, I'm, they got me already while I was sitting here. But uh, in North Texas, let's go back to number one. We're gonna recap the spring and summer. So in the spring, from about April, early April through May, end of May, we had a lot of rain, filled up the lake, damaged the, at Lake Ray Roberts, for example, damaged the uh, parks pretty badly in some areas, the playgrounds are destroyed and things like that, so um, hopefully they'll have the budget to go ahead and fix that stuff and maybe raise the level a little bit so that they don't get destroyed every time the water comes up above floodplain. Um, that said, they started releasing that water in April real heavily and it lasted for about a month, month and a half of just heavy releases. Put a lot of pressure on Louisville Lake further down the uh, Trinity River chain. But what happened is, now I theorized on this back in early April because something was wrong. Normally, 
the water below uh, Lake Ray Roberts, the Trinity River right there, if there's a heavy release, there's a big migration of, of uh, hybrid and sand bass that come up and they end up right there at the dam. Well, that never happened this year. So my theory at the time was that there was some kind of a jam or some kind of obstruction down there uh, right at Louisville or around there, somewhere along the way that was stopping the, it was letting the water flow through, but it wasn't letting the fish come back up to, to follow their instinct of going up against that current and coming up. Sure enough, uh, last month, probably mid-month, so mid-September, aerial photographs came out of the Trinity River where it feeds directly into Louisville Lake and there is probably a 500 yard long log jam that our wonderful people at USACE um, allowed to happen because they are, their policy is to do new, no clearing. And so with that many days of water release, they washed out all the dead wood, and I would say probably 500 yards of logs are there, and they can't, it's a reroute. So it's gonna actually reroute the Trinity River where it comes into Louisville Lake, unless they they say they don't know how to clear it out or it can't be done. The truth is it can be done with dynamite and it can be cleared out, but they don't want to do it. So, uh, you know, I understand. Unfortunately, they don't have the budget, I guess, to do the things they should be doing when it comes to um, switching this stretch of the Trinity River from Lake Ray Roberts to Louisville Lake into a recreational area. It is not recreational in any way right now um, due to the flooding it's had that's destroyed some of the places. And due to the fact that there's no uh, consistency in water release that allows people to kayak. And third, because they don't clear the way for kayakers to be able to come from the, the put-ins at uh, Ray Roberts down to Louisville at, the, at 380, which is Highway 380. So it's totally screwed. It's going to be screwed for a while. And I just really disappointed that they don't see the recreational value of this over the natural uh, it won't affect the natural anything to, to clear the water so it will flow but I guess they don't want that so anyway that's that that's my little preach we got into the summer it was really uh, tough fishing because of all the water fluctuation it was high and then it came down really quickly because they had so much and released so much and it made um, finding fish a little more difficult as we got into the end of July and into August what I found was plenty of fish water levels good everything perfect and then they just wouldn't eat my flies so I couldn't figure out what was going on with that um, and I was getting a, the strangest behavior this year from carp that I that I had and it was where they follow your fly all the way back in without taking it and so it was really weird that um, they don't normally follow very much. They'll just pick something up that's right there in front of them. But in this case, uh, they would follow in and never take it. So it was extremely frustrating to see that right in front of me happening and then uh, not really uh, nail it down. Of course, we caught a few fish along the way and had some clients go out, things like that. But it was, it was really an interesting year and season. We're winding it down because we had our first cold front just last week brought the temperatures down into the 50s and 40s at night and up into just the high maybe 75 today 80 degrees so it really has fall of course when it when we shift in north texas it's only two seasons it's summer and then it's winter so we'll probably get a couple more a week or two more of this before it turns brutally cold and and totally inhospitable but that does lead me to going south which is a great thing and we'll talk about that more later. For right now, I'll always run the scroll at the end that shows uh, the TPWD reports. They are conventional fishing reports, which will tell you uh, what you need to know to fly fish, really, if you just interpret what conventional people are doing and make it work for you as a fly fisherman here in Texas. Um, those reports are regional and they come out once a week. You should subscribe and you can skip all this subscribe to those reports on the uh, TPWD website and they will, you'll get a notification that they come out by text and you can just click right on that and see these reports. 
um, and I think they're broken down at freshwater, salt water, and, and something else. But anyway, that and the overall everything report it has both. So that's a good way to go. Um, of course, I also have gleaned information from the Texas Insider Fishing Report, which is done for the season now. Um, those guys are done and over. And then I also watch the um, Fox Sports Southwest, which has been really kind of good this year because they've kind of been all all around me, not with me, but all around me, including a great story on uh, Texoma and some other places um, that are very interesting to me. Uh, and they moved further east all the way to Florida, actually, um, covering the Southwest. So Fox Sports Southwest is another YouTube channel you want to check out. Um, so that's what's happening. I know it's been a long time. I've had to work really hard to find fish and, and do that. So it took a lot of time away from doing these videos. But now that things are back in kind of a routine and the Port Mansfield trip is behind me, of course, I'll be here a lot more to give you guys a hard time. Hopefully, you'll give me a hard time. But most importantly, please, if you get a chance, subscribe to this YouTube channel. I know you'll get the chance. It's not that hard. And secondly, go to www.texasflycaster.com. That's my website. It's been around since 2007. That website, if you go there, it's loaded with information on fly fishing. And it's, it's like a diary. It's like you're reading my diary of fly fishing from the beginning. Um, and you can kind of gather information from there. Like one thing, for example, is... In, we, are, we sometimes, and we haven't had it, a good one in a while, have a flounder run on the Texas coast that is just phenomenal. Um, and we missed a couple the last few years. It was really good the first time I did it. And then it kind of tailed off and the weather didn't get cold enough and things like that. Well, when I was at Port Mansfield, I caught flounder on fly and so did other people along with a lot of other kind of fish. I mean, it was, it was, a, it was a menagerie of fish down there at Port Mansfield. But anyway, um, thinking about coming up this, this fall, late fall, and borderline winter time, we think about flounder. Well, I have a feeling we may be in for another year of a flounder run this year. And the only time will tell. The weather's lining up. We'll see. But you go to www.texasflycaster.com, and you can key in on your search something on fly fishing for flounder in Texas, whatever you want, and it'll search all my stories and then put those, aggregate those up so you can look at those and read those stories one at a time or just skip to the ones you like, however you want to do it. Um, I spend more time, believe it or not, uh, writing words and on www.texasflycaster.com than I do making these videos. So. Um, hopefully these this new series of videos coming out there's some of it there's another one that I didn't write down here that I remember and <laughs> it's really of the epitome of this year it's called why it, <laughs> I've called it why is it so hard to catch carp and uh, basically it, it wasn't that hard but I, there wasn't there's no fish porn on it it's just about all the things that you, the factors that go into fly fishing for carp and how it can be so difficult. Because I have a lot of guys, a lot of guys, I mean a lot of guys, that come along and uh, they may fish, fly fish once a year or they fly fish ponds and things like that and maybe a couple of years they've been doing it, not very long. Um, fly fishing for carp is an intermediate to advanced kind of thing. It's uh, I'm not being stuck up about it or anything like that. It's just hard. And it requires accuracy, patience, and a, a calm heart. Because when you see, you're actually hunting and fishing at the same time. Because you see the carp, and you cast the carp, and you try not to scare the carp, and you get to see him take your fly, which is just incredible. It's incredibly rewarding uh, fly fishing, but it's hard. So that story, I've got it all in pieces somewhere on my hard drives. I've had trouble with my, my computer, which has slowed me way down. And uh, if it, hopefully it'll get through all this video and get this done and out before it crashes and burns. And if I go black for a while and you don't see a video for a while, feel free to contact me. Here's my phone number right along the bottom right down here. You can text me and ask me questions anytime you want. And I'll add you on 
to my hotspot uh, texting, which the guys that I got five guys right now that subscribe to hotspot. And what happens is I got a hotspot, I text you directly with uh, information on where you can go fly fishing to catch fish uh, from my experience. So this winter should be interesting. Hopefully we'll get out on Texoma, do some striper fly fishing, which is another difficult thing. And uh, then going to Oklahoma, of course, and then we're going to the Texas Gulf Coast. Hopefully, uh, I'm hopeful that as much as possible. So that, um, as much as possible for me from here, it's probably once a month for the rest of the year. We're in October, I was there. So hope, I hope in November, maybe I'll have my typical black, blue on black or uh, Black Friday in uh, Galveston. So we'll see how that goes, I don't know. All right guys, thanks for watching. If I sound tired, I am. It's been a long, hard summer and we're into the fall. It's October, like, I don't know what it is, 10, 11, 13th, something like that. Happy anniversary, mom and George. Thank you. Um, and we will see you soon. Thanks for watching. Have a great week. Watch the scroll at the end. Ask questions. Subscribe to the YouTube channel and check out www.texaspodcast.com. Thanks for watching, guys.